Salaried employees are not paid for their time. They're paid for their work. So theoretically, if you can work more efficiently, you can work less. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the scientifically backed method that I used to dramatically improve my work-life balance and how I was able to work less than 30 hours a week as a software engineer. But to start, we need to understand where our time is actually going. Now, not all days are going to be the same, but this is what one day in particular looked like for me. So at 10 a.m. I had a morning stand-up meeting, at 11 a.m. I had a team-wide meeting, and then at 12.30 I ate lunch. Next, at 2 p.m. I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my manager, and at 3.30 p.m. I had my final meeting of the day, which was with the team's designer to discuss an upcoming project. Now, I think you probably notice a pattern here. First of all, that's just a lot of time spent in meetings, and we will discuss that later on in this video, but arguably more important, is the fact that nowhere on this schedule is time to code. The primary job function of a software engineer is to write code, and yet most of us don't schedule any time to actually do that. Instead, we just code in between the gaps of our meetings, and this is incredibly inefficient. Let me explain why. You see, this all has to do with a concept known as context switching. Whenever we transition from one task to another task, some productivity is going to be lost in that transition. So it doesn't matter if we're transitioning from a meeting to coding, or transitioning from coding one project to coding another project. Regardless of what the transition is, when we transition from one project to another, we are going to lose some amount of productivity. And that research is loud and clear. One study by Chris Parnon, who's now an associate professor at NC State, looked at 10,000 programming sessions. And what it found is that after an interruption, it takes an average of 10 to 15 minutes to start coding again. And more than this, he also estimated that the task is going to take twice as long if you are interrupted while working on it, and you are likely to have twice as many errors in the resulting output from this task. So what does this mean for our own productivity? Well, if we look back at that schedule we had, it has five different context switching events just baked into it. So that means if each one of them wastes 15 minutes, we will lose 75 minutes of productivity to context switching. And that's not even accounting for extra distractions that might come up, or the fact that we could introduce more bugs into our code, and as a result, we could end up spending even more time fixing that buggy code that we write. Okay, but how can we fix this? Well, to start, we can try a strategy known as batching. What would happen if all of our meetings were moved to be after lunch? Well, as a result of that, we could code until 12.30 completely uninterrupted, or at least without any planned interruptions. Now, of course, this is going to take some buy-in from your team and your manager, but if you are able to do this or something similar, it can result in a huge boost in productivity. Now, on the topic of meetings, every meeting that you can remove from your schedule saves you 30 minutes to even an hour of coding time. Now, this is going to depend a lot on your company culture and your manager and getting buy-in, but if you can remove some of your meetings, and to me, any meeting that can be condensed into a Slack message or an email doesn't need to be a meeting, if you can remove some of these meetings, you're going to get more time to code uninterrupted. And even more than this, if there are meetings that need to happen, but you are optional, you don't even need to be there, consider skipping the meetings and just reading the meeting notes once you are done with your tasks. Okay, but now you might be saying, there's no way that I can just cancel meetings or remove all my meetings into a batch or start skipping meetings, and you aren't alone in this. So what I recommend in this case is to really focus on how you can optimize the time that you do have. So the way I do this is by starting every day by making a plan. What are you going to do with every gap in your schedule? And make sure to assign tasks to the gaps that are going to take that amount of time. So if you have a 30 minute gap, don't try to assign an hour long task because you're not going to finish it. And as a result, you will need to do extra context switching. In addition to this, try to learn how you work best. For example, for me, I know that I just can't code for more than about an hour continuously, so I make sure that I don't schedule any tasks that are going to take two hours. If I have that task, I break it down to two or three smaller tasks. And in addition to this, I also know that I need breaks, so I schedule one to two, maybe even three breaks every single day for 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure that I'm getting up and walking around a little bit. Next, I also think it's very important to learn to set clear boundaries. Have boundaries for yourself, but also for your manager. Have a time at the end of the day 
that you are committed to saying this is the end of my workday and I'm going to turn off all of my devices. I actually found that most managers not only are respectful of this, but are actually going to encourage it. And more than that, learn to say no. When you see a project that looks cool and you want to work on it, actually evaluate, is this going to make me fall behind on my current work? And if the answer to that is yes, then it's probably best that you say no to that project, both for your own work-life balance, but also for the team as a whole. Related to this, when you are giving an estimate or a timeline for how long something's going to take, don't think about it in terms of, well, if I work eight hours a day and everything goes perfectly and I never get interrupted, it's going to take this long. Instead, think about it in terms of when I get interrupted and I can't work eight hours a day and something else comes up, it's going to take this long. And that way you're sort of expecting the unexpected and you're giving more reasonable timelines. And with that said, if you did enjoy these productivity tips and you think you are going to be using some of them in your own career, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe for future content. And of course, check out this video here that the almighty YouTube algorithm thinks you'll enjoy. I'll see you in the next video.